So Fisher equation real quick. Oh, somewhere on that list you should have bond prices, calculations, interest rates. You want to be ready to do some of that. Fisher, Irving Fisher. He's going to talk to us about the relationship between interest rates in the market, what the banks are charging you and me, and that relationship with inflation. what we might call an inflationary premium. It's really pretty simple. Think about this. If I charge you 6% interest on a loan, but inflation was kicking along at 11%, how am I doing as the lender? Poorly. You're paying me 6%, so my, you know, my investment in you is earning me 6%, but prices are destroying its value by 11%. I'm losing 5% per year, real interest. You know what do I mean by real? Interest adjusted for, the, for inflation. Interest adjusted for inflation, or after you subtract inflation. So Fisher gives us this thing, he says, the banks will charge a market rate of interest, which will be equal to a real rate of interest that they want to earn. Whatever interest rate they would like to earn, plus some protection for in inflation. So in the example down here, if the bank wanted to earn 6%, that would be their intention, and inflation was at 11 they would be charging 17% on the loan. That make sense okay? When I came to the University of Florida, my father had just retired from the military. He bought a house in Gainesville. This was many, many years ago. He bought a four bedroom house with a fireplace swimming pool, two-car garage, located in southwest Gainesville in a nice, well-mature area, good neighbors, good income levels. He bought the house for $26,000, which might sound pretty cheap today, right? But back then, that was the going rate. It wouldn't sound so cheap if you recognize that when he went to work for the Veterans Administration, he was making about $8,500 a year. That was his annual salary. So you see how inflation has certainly brought up incomes as well as prices. But when Dad bought the house, he assumed a 30-year mortgage, which was at 6% interest. He was paying 6% on the mortgage. He bought the house in 1966. By 1979, for example, mortgage rates were up closer to 12 to 16 percent. But he was still paying his monthly mortgage payment of $126 a month because he had a 6 percent mortgage. And the people who had loaned that money for the mortgage, how do you think they felt? It was dumb. They felt terrible, dumb, cheated, because they were earning 6%, but if they could just make that loan over again today, they could earn 14 or 15%. And so they would call Dad about every 90 days. And by now, his, I don't know, I don't remember what the mortgage was. Let's say he had $7,000 left to pay on the mortgage. They would call Dad about every 90 days and say, looky here, Strick, let's make a deal. If you'll pay this mortgage off early, we'll give you a discount. If you'll pay us $5,000 cash right now, 
We'll cancel the mortgage. You paid up. Mm -hmm. And Dad would listen to him, him and all, and he'd say, well, how about if I offer you 1500 mm -hmm. And they go, oh, no, we couldn't do that. He'd say, well, call me when you can, and hang up and giggle. He would laugh. <laughs> he would be in a buoyant, euphoric mood for three or four days, knowing he was screwing the mortgage company. <laughs> so when I needed to borrow money from him, I waited until I knew he'd had that phone call because he was in a great mood. And this went on for some time. He eventually, they eventually came down to his terms. He paid it off for almost nothing. And he thought that was just so cool. Now, you got to remember, my dad was raised in the Depression. And the phrase we have for people who were raised in the Depression is, they know how to make the eagle scream. What does that mean? They know how to push people? They know how to take the qu a quarter. An American quarter has an eagle on one side. And you twist its neck and make it scream. It means you're really tight with money. You're really careful and tight with money, and you take a real delight when you make a good deal. That's a kind of a depression mentality. You never bought anything you don't need. You never throw away anything you might need. And every time you did good financially, you partied like a drunk sailor. So he was in a great mood. But what happened? The mortgage companies made an obligation in 1966 to earn 6%, and interest rates went up. And they could have been making much higher interest rates. By now, in 1979, if inflation was, and inflation was 12%, they're losing 6% every year on their money. So Fisher's equation illustrates what the financial markets learned as a result of the high inflation of the 1970s, the late latter 1970s, because many financial institutions had made loans at a fixed rate, and as inflation went up, their opportunity cost of what they could have been earning also went up. So they had money loaned out at 4 and 5 and 6 percent, that if they could just get it back, they could be loaning it out at 12 and 13 and 14 and 15 percent. So as a result, they came up with an adjustable rate mortgage, which is taken right from the Fisher equation. One second. Uh, sure. So the six percent they lose is not monetary, but opportunity. Opportunity cost, not monetary. Good point. The adjustable rate mortgage said the rate on your mortgage will be the prime rate plus I don't know four percent, not that much, three two percent, two percent. Well, the prime rate is the rate that the very richest people pay when they borrow from the very best banks. That's the lowest rate anybody's going to get. But it fluctuates with the market. And so as rates in the market went up, your mortgage rate, which was 2% above that, also rose. And so if you had a mortgage today at 6%, it might be that next year your mortgage rate would be at 7.5%, and your payment would go from $334 to, I don't know, $391 next year. So you didn't know what your mortgage payment was going to be each year. It would vary with the interest rate. And that's how the lenders were protecting themselves from inflation. And you still hear people today occasionally talk. Should you take an adjustable rate mortgage? When would you want to take an adjustable rate mortgage? When interest rates are high. When interest rates are high and you think they're going to come down. Would you take an adjustable rate mortgage today? No. Not unless you are stupid, stupid because interest rates are so low, they can't hardly go any lower. But someday, perhaps in your lives, interest rates will be higher. Maybe mortgage rates will be up around 7 or 8 or 9%. And you may find yourself offered the option. Should you take an, uh, an adjustable rate mortgage or a fixed rate mortgage? That may be a tougher call. Because if rates go up, your payments are going up. And if rates go down, you win. But that's the bank or the lending company protecting itself. With so, your, I'm sorry. Ahead. With your 30-year um, mortgage, though, can't, if you pay more than the amount, doesn't it isn't something that adjusts? Yeah. Well, let, me, let, me, let me do that real quickly. I don't have the numbers, but let's say let's say that you had a 30-year mortgage, 
and whatever rate, you know, 3.81%. And I'm making up numbers. Let's say that your payment every month was $846. In the first five or so years that you make your payments, you're not paying off your loan at all. You're paying interest. That's the way the payment schedules are set up. Once you've been in the house for 10 or 15 years, you're paying off more of the principal. If you want to get rid of that mortgage and pay that house off early, suppose you went to the bank every month because you, you had a great job. You said, I will pay you an extra $1,000 a month on my mortgage. You want to always have that prepayment option written into your mortgage. I can prepay against the principal whenever I want. And almost all of them will let you do that. But it's very important to tell them the $1,000 extra goes to principal, not interest. Okay? And if you did that, what would happen at the end of one year? You'd have paid $12,000 a year mortgage off in addition to whatever else you're paying here. That's what I did in my house. Oh, I finished paying my mortgage off about five, six years ago. But for the eight or nine years prior to that, I was going down and making an extra $1,000 to $2,000 a month payment on the principal. Yeah. Once you get your kids raised up and off your back, you can do things like that. Yeah. <laughs> but you do want to, and this is for any loan. If you want to pay extra on the loan, make sure it's noted that it goes to pay for principal. Otherwise, some of them will charge interest out of that too, and you get screwed again. Sir? I was refinancing on Say again? Refinancing. Refinancing is if I've got a 3.8% mortgage and suddenly there's mortgages out there for 2%, is I go to somebody loaning money at, money at 2%, I say, I want to refinance my mortgage through you. They set it up. I pay off this mortgage and I assume the new mortgage at the lower rate. So you pay off the old mortgage with the new mortgage? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Doesn't. You don't even see the money yourself. Yeah, you never see much of anything, but your monthly payment goes down. Which, if you kept your payment the same and used that, that decrease in real required payment to go to principal, you're back to the same, pay it off a little early. Okay? We recently refinanced just to take years off. We, we did a, like we left our payment the same. Yep. But we took two and a half years off of our... Exactly right. You, there's a number of ways to, to negotiate the refinancing. You can wind up with lower payments. You can wind up with a shorter mortgage. Sometimes some people will pull some cash out of the deal. Could you refinance a change from fixed to adjustable? Depending on the person lending the money to you, the, yeah, those sometimes are an option. Yeah. And you know, you're asking me these questions which are eminently practical. And guess what? Even in a f corporate finance course in college, and I've taught them for the business course, the business program here. We don't get into practicalities. We teach you how to calculate a mortgage payment. We teach you to, here's how much is interest, how much is principal. But we don't really get into, well, how do I use this when I'm buying a home? How do I use this when interest rates fall and I want to re refinance? We don't teach you the practical stuff, and we, it really should be done. Instead, there's too much other corporate theory we have to cover. Okay, so what happens with, with Fisher, we know then, if inflation rises, interest rates will rise. That's the way it happens. Okay so far? Not done with this yet, but this is, we know that if inflation starts going up, we should expect interest rates to adjust as well as lenders protect themselves. What's the other thing about inflation and interest rates? If the Fed wants to bring inflation down, they will raise interest rates. That's their policy tool. So you have to, if you have a question around this concept, you've got to ask, well, what perspective am I looking at it from? Am I looking at what does inflation do to interest rates? Or am I looking at what do interest rates do to inflation? Because you get contradictory answers. You see what I'm saying? So be careful.
when you run into those kind of questions. Can you go over that? Uh, if we know from Fisher that if inflation starts going up, we should expect interest rates in the market to rise. We also know from our study of the Fed and monetary policy that if the Fed says inflation is a problem, particularly demand pull, right, too much spending, the solution to inflation for the Fed is usually is to reduce the money supply, causing interest rates to rise, which will bring down spending. So you got to watch the way the questions might be worded. Okay? If I said higher interest rates will cause higher inflation, is that true? No. But if you just thought of this and turned the arrow around, you'd say, oh, yeah, that's right. No, it's not, Moose Bread. Higher interest rates don't cause higher inflation. Higher interest rates, when we raise interest rates from the Fed, causes lower inflation. Okay, so far? But then if we said, well, if inflation goes up, interest rates will go up. Well, that, is that true? Oh, yeah, that's the Fisher equation. So if, if now, let's talk about expected inflation. If I told you inflation next week is going to go up to 7% per year, would you want to borrow money today or wait until then? Borrow now before interest rates rise. Okay? If we see interest rates starting to go up, not because the Fed did anything. Fed hadn't done anything. Everything's kind of cooking along. But then we see the bankers are starting to raise interest rates. What does that tell us? Business is going well. Businesses are doing well, and why are they raising? People are borrowing, and the Fed, I'm sorry, the bankers think what? We're going to see higher inflation. So we're going to start anticipating that by raising our rates a little bit. So you've got to get the sequence correct, depending on the way the question is phrased to you. Isn't that like speculation? Somewhat, yeah. Is it, that's unethical? Not necessarily, no. The other reason interest rates might go up from lenders is they got more people borrowing than they thought they'd ever have, and there's a you know considerably de considerable more demand for borrowing. That'll drive rates up too. All right, Fisher equation. Don't forget it. I recall seeing a couple, one or two questions about it anyway.